Hey guys, I'm Timmy. And up next on Three Old Tech Dudes, we're going to talk about the kind of uh, advantages and gains you can get over a standard rubber duck antenna on an HT with a four element cubicle quad such as this, or any other beam antenna really. Coming up next on Three Old Tech Dudes. <laughs> want to test how well a directional antenna works gain wise I like to use NOAA weather radio stations um, now obviously the quad antenna that we're using will be more resonant on two meters you know which is um, you know this range here so 144 to 148 megahertz with the no weather radio stations um, there's one here in this very county and these usually run I don't remember some of them are about a thousand watts some are more um, but it's narrow FM like two meter ham is and this one's very nearby um, so it's very strong one to my north on 162450 now note the signal meter being a little lower there. Um, and that'll change even as I turn to some extent. And then I think this one's in Indianapolis. There's a one six two five fifty. And you can barely hear it. Now that may be somewhere else, but I know there's one in Indianapolis, which is about 70 miles north of here. Um, that's a thousand watts so we're gonna try to demonstrate how much gain you can get and I'm not talking like numbers I, I, I'm not so great with antenna math um, there's a lot of formulas to help you determine how much gain an antenna will have but this will kind of in a physics sense you know demonstrate very visually how much gain you can get from a quad antenna or a beam antenna so before we get much further, we'll talk about our antenna setup here. What I've got is a tripod. I got it a ham fest years ago. This is actually uh, was meant for mounting television antennas on top of houses on roofs. So it's got eye, eyes in the bottom that bolts go through that you can bolt it down to the roof and put your TV antenna and rotor on. Well, I just use it for a portable tripod, which is great for antennas. Uh, this has actually uh, been seen in a past 3 OTD. We did it for the the failed 222 attempt up at our ham radio club so I've got it rigged where to mount in the bed of my truck and I also have used it in fox hunts uh, and we're going to talk more about fox hunts real soon here on 3OTD but it's it's a good overall deal for that so so we got our four element quad mounted up top and then I've got little shelf here I rigged up for when I use this out and about for various setups you can set your radio on or whatever and what we're gonna do is we will simply take this antenna off the HT we've got this is a an adapter you can get for both the Beofing HTs and this particular Yesu FT65 or FT25 the two meter only version it's, it's a reverse SMA, I think. It's not all correct that. And this one here is taped up because they're crimped when you buy them from Amazon. They don't cost hardly anything. I'll put a link in right here. Um, but I ended up soldering this one, and then just for strength, I taped it up. So it looks extremely, as we call in my friend circle, Timmy rigged. But that actually makes it stronger. So we'll thread him in here gently. I don't want to strip my threads like that and then we'll take our uh, PL259 that one's grubby too and we'll try it it's probably good enough I'll, not I'll get some contact cleaner and try it clean it up a little bit but we'll just get that put right in there I always like to make sure the notches lock in so it doesn't rotate on 
the types that have that. And most do always grip right here so we don't twist it worse. And then with this HD, like if I'm fox hunting or something, I always like to clip the coax in the back clip there just to keep stress off of everything. And that works pretty well. Okay, now we're going to demonstrate this. Um, if you look here, the front of the antenna is the part without the coax. Now I'm kind of turning it with the coax just because it's easier. Um, should be able to see in this shot there. Yeah, perfect. So this is your reflector. This is your reflector, it's your driven element. This is what's actually hooked to your radio. Um, one end of the coax is hooked to one end of the wire and the shield's hooked to the other. It's under that tape. This is your first driven element and your second. You can have several more to increase gain, but uh, there are some advantages to that. It does level out at a certain point um, as far as to how how much gain you can get or increase. Uh, I knew a uh, fellow had a six element that worked really well. He was on a great hill. This is one a friend built many years ago, probably in the late 90s. My friend Brandon built this. Um, and he kept it for many years until I finally, he was tired of looking at it in his garage, didn't use it anymore. So now it's in my collection. So it's a fun antenna. Anyway, on to the demo. All right. So I'm not sure where this one is, but you'll note how poor that was earlier. And we're, I thought this was in Indy, but they're mentioning things like we think it is to another direction. Or not. Okay. thought it was on the east side of Indy. So. All right, so you get a little bit there. Let's look at it. Bloomington. All right. Note the S meter. I'll turn it away. You can see as we turn away, how the gain changes on your receive. And then that's in the null, more or less. We a little as much there. If we turn this around, we should get full signal in a certain spot or near it. Okay. Not sure where this one's at. Maybe Louisville, Kentucky. You see how much it changed just turning it like that. All right, I feel like my weather radio stuff didn't work as well as I had hoped. Um, so we're going to try a plan B. Uh, we're going to talk more about this device in an upcoming 3OTD video, but what this is is a hidden transmitter controller for amateur radio direction finding sports, ARDF, or fox hunting in cars, as it's known if you have a transmitter and then drive a large area. And I've got run-of-the-mill Baofeng HD, we'll slap, slap a battery on him, and then I'm going to drive away from my house here a bit, and we're going to find a place to put this, and uh, demo the quad a bit there, and maybe one other antenna. Okay, so we are off to find a location to put my radio. Okay, making our way back through the countryside here. There's a little church up here that I think will work perfectly. So we'll go over here to this graveyard. We're about one mile direct line from my backyard. So let's see what we can do. If they're right back here on that tree line, that'd be perfect. I mean, nobody will bother it. So we've got my transmitter rig here. We're just going to put it right back here someplace where if any walkers come by, they won't bother it. Okay. So we've got the HT here. Alright. And we've got our transmitter controller here. With its battery. We'll give it a test run here. 146 
565, which is a common Fox Hunt frequency, so we'll just use that. Okay, with this thing wired, it should. There's enough volume on the control here. We should be able to command it A2. It should start transmitting. Perfect. Basically, this can be controlled by a button on it or DTMF. So, if I push the number two, it'll start at one, it'll stop it from transmitting until I get further out. Should be able to turn this on from the house. This thing runs about 45 seconds, I guess. Here's my call. See how much weaker it is? We're already about back to the house. That's all we want. I don't want a lot of signal. I've only got it on half a watt, so. That's a good sign. So yeah, there we go. We are back at our antenna. So that's just on the duck, the river duck antenna. So S5 or whatever digital equivalent it thinks it is. So this runs for about 45 seconds. So just a bunch of tones and sequence and it ends with my call sign in CW. Or Morse code to the uninitiated of the amateur radio non-amateur radio people whatever i don't know <laughs> now if you look here at the other video you'll see this is turned roughly to the northeast right now so let's aim it toward that church down there to our south look at that i'm away from the antenna and we're running about S9 is pretty hot, obviously. I don't know how accurate this is a real S meter. Most aren't, but. And uh, so, you know, this is the front of the antenna, like I mentioned earlier. So basically this is directing this signal into the this and the reflector, hopefully I'm describing this right, creates a null in the background, in the back. And we'll put a plot of how these look, what I mean by the null. So that basically if you race the null at the back, you get better gain at the front in one direction. All right, so let's turn this around now that we've started transmitting again. And you can see that's into the side. If I touch it, it messes it up. But <laughs> Look how much weaker it is in the back. Same direction. We'll spin all the way back around. Get back up to S9. Same at the rear. And you see how it's less signal. It's, it's you know, there's a null there and, and that it's creating, and you can see that visually here. So that's more or less how you get that much in one direction is by erasing that null. And you can tell because this radio is transmitting a mile away, and it's way, way down over that hill in the back, kind of behind that barn, but still. So it's nowhere nearby using this stock rubber duck antenna. And that's the performance you get. I wonder if we can command it from here. We'll try We'll turn it off first. Oh, that restarted it. <laughs> so one must start it too. I can't remember, I thought two must stop it. Let's see here. Okay, I think that should keep it transmitting again if it hurt it. Basically those have a DTMF decoder in them the the pick con does and it can command it that way so if it doesn't come on a second we'll know and while we're waiting we'll change our tx power to half a watt here and see if we can command it with that and you see you got the low indicator in the corner now i think there's 30 seconds between transmits maybe what's funny is i feel like we must have a reflection off of the metal roof next to the to my garage here because I don't think this is pointed right at that but that's where the strongest point is so radio signals can reflect off of other metal things so it can get kind of weird okay we've not heard it for a while so let's try to turn it back on with number one I right, did it how about that <laughs> I don't think it can't hear while it's transmitting or else you could stop it but you got to wait for it to finish transmitting that's cool so it didn't take a whole lot of RF with a good antenna to make this work. And you know what, we'll, we'll try this with the uh, 
the rubber duck antenna when it's done after we turn it back off here. So. stays in transmit. Let's hit the button. Hmm. Now we'll basically try <laughs> two poor antennas here. All right, we'll try this here. Okay, it actually can hear that. Of course, it didn't take a lot. See, I mean, you can see the difference, so signal. Of course, we're a mile apart, and that's that's reasonably, you can do that with pretty poor antennas uh, on two meters, so, yeah. Yeah, these uh, pit cons are great for experiments like this. You can communicate with yourself, so to speak, <laughs> if you want to do some VHF experimenting and experimenting in part is allowed in part 97 and test transmissions so on um, VHF uh, so two meters I, I don't know you know two meters is okay to experiment on as long as you ID and uh, our uh, device on the other end is IDing here so and honestly I should ID here and I will as I stop the machine so hit it at two should hear that KB9 SNL and now, I guess we'll go pick up our transmitter. Let's go check on our radio here. I don't remember exactly where I put it. <laughs> Over here somewhere. Hello, little radio. Oh, in disguise. Let's turn this off. There we go. 